Well, just coming into the pier at Papiti um, City or town or whatever you call it. Um, it's got to be a city, it's pretty big, on the Tahiti Island. Um, yeah, so you know, there's a ferry port, ferry terminal there. I'm scanning around and there's a dry dock over there, floating dry dock. A couple of ships, of cargo ships, wharfs containers so it's a pretty big port well this morning we're um, on a bus doing a tour called East Coast Highlights it's a bit drizzly today um, wet. Um, very wet outside so yeah. it's, it's rained early morning it's supposed to be fine this afternoon so this only goes for a few hours or something, doesn't it? Yeah. The full words to welcome people in French Polynesia, in Tahiti, it is Tahitian words, it's Yaolana, Maeva, Manava. This is the full expression to welcome people in Tahiti. Sun is coming, my friend. <laughs> yeah, clouds breaking. As long as the rain holds up. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of miraculous of Sunday. Let's go inside. We'll Look that flower there. It actually looks nice with the rain, it's all wet. This is yeah. the famous breadfruit tree. Oh. Breadfruit tree is a part of recent history of French Polynesia. Breadfruit tree brings here the Captain Blag and the famous band. Thank you. <laughs> Good, thank you. With a, uh, a small rain this morning, that refreshed a bit the air. <laughs> yeah, a bit of, a bit of uh, lightning too. Yeah. It's the first time since maybe three months that we didn't have any rain, so we're happy to have the rain. Yes. Thunder mm. claps as well. <laughs> it freshens the place up again. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I think that everybody might hear, be here. Um, just to let you know that um, my name is Ten Aliyah, you can call me Ten and I will guide you to the visit of the house. So do you have any ideas of where you are right now? I know that you, you're maybe in Tahiti, <laughs> but uh, you know this place? Uh, what is this place particularly? The house. No. Yeah, house, right? Yeah, the author. author. <laughs> exactly. So this, uh, this place is the house of uh, James Samanho, an American writer who was born at the end of the 19th century in 1887 in Koufax, Iowa. And we, we kept this place. This place is a replica of the original house that I will talk to you a bit later on the visit. And this place is really uh, famous because um, the, the man who, who uh, owned the place wrote Mutiny on the Bounty. And you probably maybe read of some one of the versions. <laughs> I think it's more his house than mine. <laughs> So he wrote in 1932, James Samanho wrote in 1932, Mutiny on the Bounty. And then there were three versions that got adapted from the writings. And you maybe saw one of the versions? No? Yeah. OK, so there is the 1935 version with Clark Gable and Charles Lawton. Yes. Yeah. Then there is the 1962 with Marlon Brando. Yeah. yeah. And the last one that uh, you went to Mooria and you maybe saw the, the island. It, it looks like School Island, Mooria. And the 1984 version was uh, shot in Mooria because there were too many houses on the island, mm. unfortunately. 
And on the other side, on the island of uh, Pitcairn, as we can see here, uh, they all started to get sick and killed each other. And in 1808, Mayhew Folger, who was a whale fishing captain, rediscovered the island and encountered Sir John Adams, who was the only uh, mutiny uh, man adult surviving on the island. So there was only John Adams, Tahitian woman, and kids on the, on the island. And you see uh, John Adams's prayer here, just under. And what does they? We have a picture of uh, Thursday, October. So when uh, Mayhew Folger arrived on the island, Thursday, October Christian, who is uh, the son of Christian Fletcher, who led the, the mutiny on the ship, uh, went to see uh, Captain Folger when he arrived on the island of Pitcairn. So he is one of the descendants, and we have also pictures of uh, descendants on the island. And I think this is one of uh, Thursday October's uh, son. And all the furnitures are really in cordial wood. We call it Tahiti the, the top, which was a uh, cheap wood by then, but now it got lots of values because it, it, this is one of the most resistant uh, wood that we have uh, here. All the woods imported, made with pine, they all get eaten by. Uh, by fleas or um, uh, by ants, fortunately. Yeah. So James Hall designed himself the, um, the, all the furnitures. This place, as I told you before, is a replica of the original house, which was uh, rebuilt in 2002 and uh, converted into a museum because there is lots of historical uh, parts of the island uh, inside of this house. On the other side of the, um, of the dining room here, we have a part of the 3,000 books personal books that James Hall owned uh, to get his inspiration from. So we have here in this corner and on the, in the office library as well. Here behind you, you will see as well the copy of the manuscript that James Hall and Charles Bernard Nordoff wrote together. I will talk to you a bit more uh, later about uh, Charles Nordoff because it's thanks to their collaboration that they uh, were successful together. So. Here you also have the other uh, part of the 3,000 books that James Salman all out. Yeah. Here and here behind me are the, um, the translation of the different versions of the Mutiny and the Bounty. So we have the Italian version here, we have a German German's version, well, all the different versions. You have a picture of the author himself, James Salman James Amanol sitting on his favorite chair just uh, under, the, under the, the picture here. And here's the, the typewriter. So this is his original typewriter that he always uh, had with him during his, his uh, whole life. So, But instead, he kept on uh, cruising on uh, England. And this is how he encountered the military men uh, parading by the road and realized that the First World War was starting. Yeah. And this is thanks to the war. I'd say, that he got his first writings officially uh, published, which is uh, Lord Kitchener's uh, Mob, The Adventures of an American uh, Soldier in the Great Britain Army. To the War Memorial, and this is what we are going to get, um, get through right now. So if you, for those who are interested about the war and um, the author's experiences, you can come in if you'd like to. So James Amano came in, um, in uh, Great Britain in 1915, and then uh, he discovered that the war was starting, so he sold his uh, bicycle and enlisted as a Canadian. Okay. Do you have any ideas why he enlisted as a Canadian? Oh. Because America wasn't in the war. Yeah, exactly, you're right. The American citizen couldn't get enlisted in the war. Uh, they could get in prison or even have the death uh, penalty, unfortunately. So, he, uh, he, he participated to, to the Battle of Luz in uh, not too far from Paris, from Lille, in the northern part of, the, of France. And he was a machine gunner back then. So unfortunately for the Canadian forces, they had a really rough time. And uh, James Amadho, fortunately for him, he survived to, uh, to this difficult moment. He, um, he wrote his autobiography and he uh, gives all the details of uh, the, that time of the war. So the British forces found out that he was American and they nicely let him go back to uh, America with no issues. And when he, he was in America, he met, uh, he met a publisher who offered him to write about his uh, experiences as an American soldier in the Great Britain Army. And this is how his first writings got officially published. Uh, 
Manuel came to, to Tahiti, we come back to, the, to his past life. He came on board of a Copra schooner with uh, Joseph Winchester. And uh, this is how he also uh, sailed through the Pacific in the Tuamotus on board of uh, this uh, schooner because there was no plane back then. And after a few, uh, I'd say a few trips, uh, Joseph Winchester invited James Manuel to dinner. And this is how James Manuel encountered Sarah Winchester, his wife. Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. So they had two, uh, children? two, two yeah. children, yeah. Nancy yeah. Hall and Conrad Hall. Yeah. So James Simon Hall was a great writer, and his son, Conrad Hall, became a great realizer. Oh. I think that you recognize this man? Yeah, John Wayne. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So he got an Oscar from John Wayne for realizing. So that's his son on the left. So this is uh, Conrad Hall. Okay. Yeah, James Owen Hall's son. Okay. He gave Conrad um, Conrad's name um, because, because he, of, yeah, 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 of Joseph Conrad, yeah, his yeah. favorite author. Yeah. Oh. yeah. What was amazing is that uh, Conrad Hall was uh, like a Tahitian. He was he talked fluently Tahitian, yeah. perfectly, mm -hmm. and he went really far in his career because he got an Oscar for Bash Cassidy and the Sand and Skill. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, exactly. So he also had an Oscar, um, a world record, because in less than 30 years, he had an Oscar for Bosch Cassidy and the Sand and Skill, yeah. American Beauty, yeah. and um, Road to Perdition. Oh. So Joseph Conrad, um, uh, Conrad Hall, sorry, was, um, was the man who realized all these movies. The gardens come up very nicely after the rain, and glisten and push the dust off them. And these are very nice gardens in the grounds of the uh, the hall, the memorial building. Here starts uh, another part of the Polynesian history. This is in this place that the first European arrive in Tahiti. This guy was the English navigator Wallis and he arrived here at the end of the 18th century. Yes. You can see the only lighthouse from French Polynesia. It seems strange we have so many islands. But we, we didn't need lighthouse. The only place where you really need lighthouse, it's Tahiti Island. And it is working. It's not a monument. The light is working. They start some uh, works to refurbish the building because it's, you perhaps can see the date, it's from the middle of the 90th century. This is one of the first realizations from French administrations. As you know, or not, during the first part of the 19th century, the British ruled French Polynesia. We have like not a war, but a fight between English colonization and French colonization. The first part of the 19th century, Polynesian people live under the role of British missionaries. And at the middle of the 19th century, finally, French win the battle. And the colonizations became French colonization. It's why here we are in French Polynesia, because the French took this island. It's why nous sommes en terre française. Why? It's why we are in France. It's not a place to live, it's just a place to have gathering reunion, meeting, <coughs> and everything. You see, it's traditional Polynesian building. It's round. It's not like 
colonial building. The Gens Norman Hall House, it's not Polynesian still, it's like the colonization house. Pretty little place. It's canoes. Monument to the missionaries who first arrived in uh, French Polynesia and when they spread out to the other islands. And there's rocks on the walls depicting the different islands and parks saying when they got there. This beach is a um, black beach, uh, black sand. It's quite strange, but it's all because of the uh, volcanic rocks that broke down to make the sand. Quite a nice little bay, and apparently this is the bay where most of the uh, European explorers came in. And Captain Bly, Captain Cook, a few of the others. before they um, discovered the harbour, which is just around that bend there. They, they have a jellyfish problem occasionally as well. But um, that doesn't dissuade these kids out there. Having fun in the waves. It's a monument to um, the arrival of the bounty. In October 27, 1788. It's a very protected uh, beach here off the waterfront with the um, reef out there. You can see why they um, chose to come in here. Underwater trail. This trail is a perfect opportunity to discover the lagoon and its wonderful creatures. Swim along and enjoy the preserve marine life of this area. Sea and Enemy Garden. City of Dam Shellfish. Hospital on the Reef. Caution, beware of currents. Have a look up. Looking towards the harbour. Well, um, once again, we're back on board. 
after a little bus trip around Tahiti um, and what was the name of the city that we were at, boarded at, Atcha something or other? I can't read that. <laughs> that one. Where is it? Oh, Papeti. Papita. Papeti? Papeti, Papita. Papeti, Papeti. Yep. That's the name of the harbour city. And there are, what do you say, there are four other surrounding um, towns or villages or suburbs, yeah, all basically. They different names, weren't they? Yeah, different names. Yeah. But, and we, so we went uh, up down the east coast of Tahiti and uh, on a bus trip and um it was interesting yeah no it was lovely it was and we went to what was the first stop we went to see that that um museum, museum. For, the, for the author of mutiny on the bounty yeah that was really interesting wasn't yeah. it it was really good all the things he's done yeah in, in two wars um, yep. and then we went to a beach and unfortunately we didn't take any photos with pinky in them because um, we didn't think it was appropriate in the museum. Oh no! And no. I didn't want her to get dirt on her from the black sand. So yeah. So Pinky yeah, stayed. Yeah, because all the sand here is just black, isn't it's, it? It's yeah, bulk, volcanic. Volcanic yeah. sand. From the. Yeah. What was the name of that rock? Black, bulk, bulk. Uh, basalt. 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 That's it. Yeah. yeah. Black rock. Yeah. But it was a much more comfortable. Oh. It was so much better today. Uh, today, uh, yeah. the temperature outside is not too bad. Um, and the humidity is not too bad it was, today. It was either. bearable, yeah, yep. because it rained uh, a lot apparently last night. Yep. Uh, and this morning, and we had a light shower, and in fact, it's um, raining now, yeah. just after we got back on the boat. And there was um, a fair few of the um, day cruise things cancelled today as well. That's right, they cancelled yeah. them because of the lightning this yeah. morning apparently. They didn't want to take them out. No, no lightning. But ours went ahead, which was good, and yep. so we had an enjoyable morning, yep. didn't we? Yep. And we got back uh, lunchtime, and... Yeah, um, and they said, unfortunately, we're here on a Sunday. Yeah, so nothing is open. Because everything has shut. Anything that was open today shut at noon. Yeah, um, and that was like yesterday too. Yeah, on Saturday yeah. everything shut at noon. You couldn't even get a drink yesterday anyway because it was all shut. Oh no, when we got back to the harbour, I did notice there was There was one, a coffee shop open yeah, still. Yeah, and a restaurant on that corner was open. Yeah, so but that's... That was uh, about it. So yeah. anyway, oh. um, Tahiti's it's a little bit disappointing yes. in that um, you imagine it as all sorts of like a tropical island, but honestly, it's just like Fiji. It's yeah. just developed. Um, there's ports, a there's a lot of industry, yeah. um, a lot of dogs, a lot dogs, of dogs and everywhere. chooks, and chooks, yeah. roosters, and but a lot of dogs. There was dogs everywhere, oh. and they just roam sort of like around, yeah, don't they? They yeah. don't like they stand in the middle of the street and put a drive around them, and yeah. oh, it's awful. Yeah, and chickens, chickens everywhere. Chickens. Chooks. I'm not really sure what they do with the chickens. Whether they They've they just seem to roam yeah. everywhere, don't they? Yep, there's no locking them up. No, no. Yeah. A lot of roosters. So that's the end of our Tahiti visit. Um, yeah. We're off to, to another island tomorrow. Mora Mora? Mora, is it? I don't know, it's not Mora Mora. Is it not? No. Mori, something like that anyway. We're going to it tomorrow. So, um... <gasps> yeah. I found it better today getting on and off the ship because... We're it tied was up. just, it was so easy. We're tied up at yeah. the wharf today. But tomorrow, tomorrow we, have we have to, to tender, tender it again. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then that's our last port. And then we have five days at sea. Before we get to Hawaii. Hawaii, yes. And the, uh, so. oh, the interesting fact was that the um, Polynesian people are adamant that they settled Hawaii from Polynesian islands. Oh yes, yes. And Hawaiian okay. people didn't come no. here to settle. And he said they, they settled from here, they settled um, or explored Hawaii and also New Zealand. Yeah. So the New Zealand Maoris are Polynesian descent. That's what they said today, yeah. yeah. But no, okay. it's very interesting. Bye. Bye.
I will take care of my driver because I can't drive myself. <laughs> That's so easy. Ha, ha, ha.